Do you ever have those times where you don't know what perfume to wear in a day? If you want to know what my recommendations are of perfumes that can work in any situation that you might run into, stick around and watch the rest of the video. Hello everyone, welcome to the Olfactory Library. My name is Reno and this is my video series here on YouTube where I share to everyone my love for fragrances. If you're new here, thank you so much for spending time with me today. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for tuning back in. Now I just want to say before we get into the video, if you want to see more contents like this in the future, do consider subscribing to this channel and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified if I do upload more videos in the future. But most importantly, please do leave a like in this video. It will definitely go a long way. It will definitely help me with YouTube's algorithm. Now for today's video, we are going to talk about perfumes that I consider grab and go perfumes that are easy to wear that can work in any situation or any encounters that you might run into. Other people here on YouTube would call these perfumes easy reach perfumes. You can call it like that. These are perfumes that you can just reach for when you are in a hurry, when you don't know what to wear for the day, and you know these perfumes will just work anytime, any day. Now I have a huge collection of perfumes and I was very strict in selecting my perfume recommendations for you today but it was still so hard to narrow down my choices into these few choices. I have seven perfume recommendations for you today. Most of them are unisex. Probably one or two are men targeted perfumes. One is a women targeted perfumes. But like what we always say in this channel, wear whatever you want to feel like wearing because at the end of the day, perfumes are just liquid in a bottle. Let me begin with a recommendation from the house of Chanel and this is Paris Deauville. This perfume has prominent notes of basil, orange, lime, rose, and patchouli. Now this perfume is one of the first three perfumes that came out of the Lizzo collection. And I guess from the notes breakdown, you can already tell that this perfume opens with a burst of citruses and leans a little bit towards the green direction. Yes, because this perfume has a basil note, kind of like what you would get from Guerlain's Mandarin Basilique, but this one is a lot richer, is a lot denser, and has a lot more presence and long lasting than that perfume. It's perfect for sunny days. It's perfect when you're just going running around errands. It's perfect for the office. The experience that I'm getting here is kind of the same experience that what I get when I wear um, Terre de Hermes and I have the um, Oh, intense vetiver version. It's kind of like that experience of burst of citruses and then you have this grounding woody kind of earthy kind of feel. It doesn't have the kind of earthiness or the woodiness that the vetiver in Terre de MS gives you. But I am getting a little bit of that earthiness coming from the patchouli in here. And it does kind of give me a woody experience, even though this doesn't credit any woods at all. This is perfectly unisex, but I guess also the reason why it was so easy for me to compare the experience that I got from this one to Terre de MS is that this kind of slightly leans towards the masculine direction. But honestly, if you love Mandarin Basilique by Guerlain or Terre de MS, because I know a lot of ladies love Terre de MS, you would definitely love this one pretty much. The next two perfumes are cheapies coming from the house of Zara. The first one that we are going to talk about is Los Angeles 6902 Hollywood Boulevard or just plainly Los Angeles. Now just basing on Fragranica, this perfume only credits three notes, cardamom, tobacco, and patchouli. This perfume blew me away the first time that I smelled this one. Although yes, very authentically Zara, a lot of their notes can come off very synthetic. But for the experience that I got with this perfume, this is just really beautiful. If you are sensitive to the note of tobacco like me, you will love this one. Because the tobacco here is more woody and sweet and it's not harsh or screechy and it doesn't come off very dark. With the prominent cardamom at the top, combining with that tobacco, this kind of reminds me of Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf. But it's very different from that perfume though. Now, the best comparison that I can make if you're familiar with the perfumes in Zara, this I think I would compare to the rich, warm, and addictive um, from their tobacco collection. That one, very famous in the perfume community. Imagine that one, but made a whole lot fresher and brighter. This come off slightly fresh to me, even though this is very spicy. So if you are into that kind of perfumes, fresh, spicy, and very aromatic, definitely try this one out. 
especially if you also love rich, warm, and addictive. The next Zara perfume that we are going to talk about is another one that is much loved by the perfume community. This is Ebony Wood from the Emotions Collection in collaboration with Jo Malone. Now again, basing on Fragranica, this only credits three notes, pink pepper, cloves, and ebony wood. Now I really have to give it to Zara because I used probably one or two Zara perfumes when I was still in med school and they were kind of like lackluster to me as far as performance is concerned. But to my surprise, this perfume, Ebony Wood, and the Los Angeles 6902. I spray on my clothes whenever I wear perfumes. I got probably about 10 to 12 hours with these perfumes. I am not kidding. They have been really amping up their performance. Projection-wise, maybe moderate to, you know, about an arm's length, maybe. But these perfumes are beautiful, especially this one. The woods in here is slightly drier, slightly sweet, but I do get a little bit of cedar wood in here. I know this is going to be a little bit controversial, but if you are going to layer Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf, Santal 33, and Baccarat Rouge 540, you will kind of get those nuances in this perfume. But mind you, this perfume smells nothing like any of those perfumes. The first time that I wore this perfume out, I went on a 24-hour shift at the hospital with this perfume, so I know very well the performance. But at the same time, during the whole time that I was wearing this one, those were kind of the nuances that I was getting throughout the wearing experience with this perfume. It's woody, it's spicy, and it has a tinge of sweetness. This is the second perfume that I own from the Emotions collection. And out of all the perfumes in that collection, this is the most beautiful, the best one out of all of them. Really, this perfume is worth all the hype here on YouTube in the entire fragrance community and one that I think everybody should have especially if you are a perfume collector or if you are a perfume enthusiast especially considering the price that you're paying for and what you're getting. The next perfume is one of my most favorite sandalwood perfumes of all time if not my most favorite. This one is coming from the house of Luebe and this is 001 Woman. This perfume has key notes of orange, pink pepper, sandalwood, vanilla, and amber. It still has that tinge of creaminess, that creamy character typical of sandalwood, but it's leaning more towards the drier direction. Perhaps it smells a little bit drier because of the spices, but it's not overly spicy. But what makes this perfume really versatile, I think, is because of that burst of mandarin at the top that really gives this perfume solarity and brightness. This one has been compared a lot to Santal Blush by Tom Ford. I would agree to a point. If you are into sandalwood perfumes and want a more spicy experience, go for Santal Blush. But this to me is a more well-rounded perfume because of that mandarin that really gives this solarity, that jammy kind of experience. If you've had orange jam in your life, that's kind of what I'm getting here, that sweet jammy experience, very solar, very bright, but still very, very woody with that sandalwood and spices in here. The next one might be an obvious choice. This one is coming from the house of Christian Joe, and this is Sauvage. De Parfum. This perfume has prominent notes of bergamot, lavender, nutmeg, ambroxan, and vanilla. Now, I was one of those people who have shunned this perfume for the longest time because my nose just couldn't understand what was going on with this perfume. There's just so much to take. It's fresh, it's aromatic, it's sharp, it's sweet. There's so much in it and I honestly much prefer the elixir version because it's a lot more tamed, it's a lot more refined but honestly this may sound funny but I recently acquired a different kind of appreciation for the earlier versions such as the uh, such as the Eau de Parfum or the, even the Eau de Toilette because here's a little story. I had a long layover at Changi Airport in Singapore on my way to Vietnam and they have this boutique in the airport that just says perfumes and cosmetics that you can find everywhere in all the terminals in there and every time I pass by those boutiques I'm getting a whole lot of the Sauvage DNA in there the Imbroxen, the Bergamot 
the tonka bean, the sweetness of the vanilla and whatnot. That description, that smell of a boutique, the smell of a perfume store, the smell of a perfume counter, that was basically the reason why people were hating on this perfume. Because these perfumes do smell like what you would get when you walk into a perfume store or a perfume counter. But just undeniably so, that DNA just smells so good and very very inviting. There is a reason why this perfume have been become one of the best selling perfume these days. It's sweet, it's aromatic, slightly sharp. I'm pretty sure this is coming from the Ambroxan, but this smells very confident and overall just smells very versatile. As far as compliments are concerned, a lot of people love this perfume. I'm not a niche snob, but I was a Sauvage snob, but undeniably this perfume is just really really likable and this just works anytime. Next one is coming from the French house Italie Tohange and this is Herman Amicote. This perfume has key notes of Geosmin or otherwise known as Petricor, Ambroxan, Rose, and Musk. Now what I love about Italie Tohange is that it's a niche house but it's fairly affordable. Their perfumes can go if not cheaper then probably just as cheap as any you know Christian Dior perfumes or Chanel's. Now going back to this perfume, this perfume is known by its shorter name, Herman Amicote. But if you turn this bottle on its upside, you would see just like a lot of other Italie Tranche perfume, it has a longer name. This one has a full name of Me Passe on Nomba, Herman Amicote. This perfume is named after a poem by Victor Hugo called What Two Horsemen Were Thinking in the Forest. If my memory serves me right, I think that's the name. This name is from the narration in that poem which translates to it seemed to me Herman is a shadow by my side apparently the other horseman in that poem is named Herman this is probably the most cerebral the most conceptual perfume in this list but probably has the most simplest wearing experience among all the perfumes in this list. Based on my readings, that poem is supposed to talk about two horsemen going into the forest. To me, this perfume really gives you that story. This perfume is what I imagine what it would smell like if you go into a forest after a rainy day and around you, you are surrounded by bushes of roses and a lot of other flowers. The note of petrichor is very obvious from the get-go. Petricor, if you don't know, is kind of like the smell of the pavement or the soil after the rain. It blends so well with the Ambroxan in here that really gives this perfume that kind of metallic smell. But this is really, really beautiful. This smells very watery. This smells very fresh. And Ambroxan being as it is also gives off the slight woody experience with this one. But the other most prominent note in this perfume is the rose. How I would describe this perfume is this smells like a metallic woody rose that's very dewy or a rose that's after, you know, after being watered or after a rainy day. But it's very fresh. It doesn't feel heavy. This smells very, very unisex. And this one just smells very, very unique. Probably the most unique perfume in this list. And if you love rose, check this one out. If you're looking for a very unique grab and go perfume, this perfume should be your next purchase. And now for the giveaway. And since my last giveaway, I said to myself that I wasn't going to give another giveaway until I probably reach about 500 subscribers. If you didn't know, two weeks ago was my birthday and the opportunity came when I was gifted a full bottle of Italie Tohange Cologne. This one right here, which I already have my own full bottle of. Now just based an observation I know it's been raining about almost every day since February I think but I know that summer is right around the corner and these perfumes are going to be perfect and as a birthday giveaway I will be giving one full bottle unboxed very much sealed to a lucky winner all you have to do is like this video subscribe to my channel follow me on Instagram share this video in your Instagram story and tag two of your friends and tag me as well that may sound a lot but it's very very simple don't miss this chance to own a full bottle of Italian Cologne. I will be announcing the winner anytime April 30th so as long as I haven't made the announcement yet you still have your chance and last but not least probably my most favorite purchase this year so far this is from the house of Kenzo and this is Kenzo on the toilet intense this perfume has prominent notes of sea notes watermelon spices fig 
And the wood note that is particularly used in this perfume is Akigala wood. I first learned about this perfume through Ashley in Paris here in YouTube. I have a full dedicated review with this perfume here on my channel. You can watch this video. I will link it down below. Now this perfume as a dead giveaway based on that notes breakdown. This smells very aquatic, but this is aquatic in a very different, unique, but at the same time, a familiar way. It has a C note in here that's very friendly, that's very inoffensive. Personally, I don't like C notes in perfumes, but this one I personally really, really love. And one note in particular that I love about this perfume is the note of watermelon. Combining with the C notes in here, this to me smells like a salted watermelon, and it just made it even a more unique experience. It's very fresh. It has that fruity kind of sweetness. It has loads of spices in here that's not overpowering. It's very much in the background, but they are present. That really is, in my opinion, what is making this perfume really versatile. Really gives you that sensuality. I would go even as far as saying that this will work with date nights. The watermelon note doesn't last very long. I probably only got about three to four hours of that watermelon note before it fades away. But still what you're left with is this beautiful experience of aquatic, spicy, woody experience that is unlike any other but at the same time smells very familiar because this perfume will kind of remind you of Aqua de Gio or other Kenzo perfumes or even Icy Miyake perfumes but honestly this perfume really deserves all the hype that it is getting around the perfume community and really I think one that could compete in a lot of the other blue perfumes in the market today like Blue de Chanel or even Dior Sauvage. This perfume really ticks all of the boxes that we are looking for in this list. Check this beautiful perfume out. This is Kenzo Ohm or the Toilette Intense. So that is it for today's list. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making this one. Don't forget about our giveaway and come back to this video or my Instagram for the announcement. And as always, wherever you are, I hope you're staying safe, stay curious, and I'll see you on the next one.